Hello everybody. We're going to show you how to piece block 6A. It's the first block in the Mrs. Stickle sampler on row 6. It's got kind of a weird way it goes together. Um, you see the kind of a cross in the middle? That piece is going to be pieced first Those with those edges on it, with the, the corners. Okay, now you see how that one's beginning to come together there? See how the pieces look? You've got that, but you're going to piece that first. Once that's pieced, then you're going to set in the other pieces. Now there's another one where it's been trimmed out, and it's going to, it's been, the little weird shaped pieces are set in. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Mom, and she's going to show you how you're going to set those little pieces in. This piece right here, you're going to piece using the general directions, piecing at piece numbers one, uh, two, three, four, five, doing that using the general directions. When you get to the end of that, then you're going to do what she's going to show you to now. Okay, Mom, it's all yours. Okay, to begin with, I already did this set in, and the seam number was one, two, and three. Now I'm ready for this piece, which is four, five, and six. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is clip here. Okay, let me look down here a little closer. This so you little fellow right here. I'm going to pick it up so I can do it. You see where it's on the foundation that it says clip. And that's Just to the stitching on both of those. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is trim this seam here and this seam here and this one. Leave this extra out here. So you're going to trim only on the seams that have the, the circled, circled numbers on them. numbers. Okay, and you can do it with a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors. And personally, at this point, I prefer scissors because of the angles you have to cut. And you have a little more control, because if that ruler slips... Okay, folks, it's not a pretty picture. Now, I'm going to take, this goes here. The first seam to sew is number four. I've already done one, two, and three. You always sew them in numerical order. When you've got circled numbers, go in numerical order. There is a reason for it. And I've got to run get a pin right quick. Okay. Well, in that case, I will show you here. She's got these pieces. All you're doing is you're starting with a rectangle piece of fabric, and you're just putting a little swatch of glue, little swipe of glue and gluing it to the fabric or doing it to your foundation so that you've got your your um, plenty on the outside edges of it. That's all that is, but you will have to have a little bit of, of washable glue to put on that. You put it on your foundation, attach your fabric to it, and you're good to go. Okay, now that okay. she's found a pin. I'm back. So I'm going to so I want to sew between this point and this point and no farther. So I'm going to stick the pin through there and I didn't hit the exact corner, so I'm going to move the pin so that I do get the corner. Okay, that one's lined up. And the next one is in this point. And I'm trying to push it through seam stitches, and, and that one matched up. I matched here, and I matched here. So the next thing I'm going to do, and you'll notice there's a little bit of the, of the color peeping up here. That's okay. The important thing is to match the seam line. And I'm going to stick my pin in there and stick my pin in here. And, you, and I'm going to sew from this direction and go this way. That's why the pins are headed in the direction that they are. Okay. Turn over on the back side. Let's see what it looks like. Right when there. you put your pins in from the front side, you put them on the line that was printed on the front. Then you can see they are on the line on the back side also. So both pieces are lined up. Your seam lines are lined up the way they need to be. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to go sew this piece. And ordinarily I would start in one place and back up. And in this case, I'm going to start at the corner and I'm, go I'm going to sew forward and then I'm going to back up again. Just take a couple of stitches, and then I'm going to sew over here, and when I get to that pin, I'm going to hold it and let the machine, well, I've got it out of there already. You're and backstitch. You're holding the pin on the machine bed. 
the fabric itself and the piece that you're sewing on is not being held down by your finger. Therefore, whenever you sew, the feed dogs pull the piece away from you like they should, and your finger is holding the pin, and it just kind of naturally pulls it out. But it still keeps everything lined up until that happens. Now, I checked the backs both Okay, we're on the second seam of one of the inset pieces, and she's getting ready to sew it. She's got it all lined up. And backstitch just a little. Oh, she's not at the beginning. Not at the beginning. That's right. We're going clear to the outside edge. Backstitch at the center. It's a very short seam. Okay. Okay, that one's done. Now we'll look at the second. Now the piece. next one has to be done. I'll hold this and then rotate that. And you want to make sure that you don't have a pucker in either layer in the very center. You want this to be flat and this to be flat. No puckers. Okay. Pretty much a given that this point's going to end up okay. But I'm going to stick a pin through there just to make sure right at that point came out on the corner. We're good. Now you notice I've marked this. I'm going to sew past the end of the seam and I'm going to back stitch here but not out here. And I'm doing this so that I can kind of keep track of everything here. It works easier to to sew to the through the seam allowance just to keep the pieces in place for further application yeah. to the block. Ordinarily when I do insets, I usually <clears throat> sew from the outside edge <clears throat> of the block to the center. <clears throat> but in this case, it, this piece is so little, and the the push-pull of the feed dogs against the machine foot sometimes will create a little bubble at the center. And this is too small. You don't need a bubble any place. So a back stitch there. I'm going to hold the pin and let the machine pull the stuff, the piece off the pin, and I'm going to sew through Okay, that's seam allowance. And that little red mark is just a friction pin. It'll come off as soon as I press it. Yep. Any color works. Red just shows up real good for demonstration purposes. And you notice these little, these cute little things here? Trim them off if they're in your way. They're not going to be seen. You don't have to get rid of them, but they're just a little extra bulk that you might not want. So I'm going to cut those out. Okay. Now the next thing is press everything to the center. And I remove the foundation from the seam allowances. Of this piece. Of both the very center and the little inset piece. Mm -hmm. okay. All of this goes. That is the the, fab, the foundation that's in the seam allowance. Okay, now then, then I'm going to press everything to the center, and I'll go over here and do that. And it just kind of presses itself. It it just happens real real nicely. All right, and this is what we have. Okay, so we're getting those insets in there. Okay, now the next inset, a repeat of this one. I'm not going to do that because, well, you can just carry on. Now, the next thing to do is to put this little Now you center, have a square. You have a square. Now it goes on the foundation, and it says unit one, two, three, four, five, and you want to have everything headed so that you can read the so that the read it like it should be. In other words, the printing should be head on to read. Nothing turned sideways. Not this way. Now not that way. Your inset pieces are going to be sideways, but you're going to look at the very center of the block. That's the one that you orient with the with the master block is all the very right. center. Very center. So having said all that, this is pressed. Remove the remaining foundation from the whole thing but leave this little piece in there because that helps you 
make sure that it's headed the right direction. Now okay. that's, I'm going to move that out of the way. Now I'm going to turn this over and this, this right here was that little center piece that I made. And see, I'm still minusing on this one, but we got the whole center here. Then you press it on, press it in place. You're going to use a little bit of, of glue and glue it in place because it's a single piece that's going to go on this master foundation. Right. And when you get ready to place it on here, it's not sewn to anything yet. So you want to put it on here so that your seam, your grade, grade lines, the gray dashed lines, end up as close to the seam allowances or the seam lines in this little piece as you can get them. They may not always be 100% spot on, but they'll be very close. Once that there, and then I glued that down. Before I sewed, well then the next thing I did was put this piece on and this piece on. Now it's it's there. It's This little piece is not gonna go anywhere. So I slipped in there and I pulled out that piece of foundation that I'd left for orientation. Okay. Then I finished with 3B and 4B. Okay, now we have it out to here. The next thing to do is put on this and this, which is 5A and 6A, 7B and 8B. And that's as far as you go with that. Now, the next step says unit 6, because unit 6 stops to here. Goes now, to here. before we go too much farther, all of what we're going through is in the written direction. Some of the, the visuals on putting the, the center together are much easier to see if they're a visual. Uh Hi everybody. We're going to show you how to do block 6F. That's the block that it looks like. It's an applique and pieced. Um, so mom has got all the pieces laid out here and we're going to show you kind of the nuts and bolts of how to put this block together. The first thing I want to show you is that when you place appliques onto a, the place that it goes in, as a general rule, the orientation is going to be that you read the words the same direction. In this case, you don't want to do it this way. The words are going sideways here and straight on here. You want to make sure that these are going straight on both directions. Okay, that being said, okay, mom, what do we do first? Okay, the first thing obviously is you want to stitch the red placement lines on every piece of the foundation. There are five pieces that you stitch this on. That's a given. Usually this is going to be the piece of fabric that is removed that's going to be behind the applique, but it's a little difficult to get this cut out so that it's not terribly messy. I leave it. After the block's done and the foundation is off, you can go ahead and slip that and take it off out if you want. But this foundation is going to go underneath this, or literally on it, but I'm going to take this, move it over to here, and then pick them up together. Now, you see that little edge right there? On the foundation? On the on foundation the of the applique, the applique foundation pattern. Match it up with this line right here. Okay, before you go any farther, how are you orienting it sideways? I see up and down, but how sideways? How sideways? I'm looking at it. The shadow of the applique should come right along this line here and right along this line here. Okay. So that's how I orient that. That's where it should end up. And I put a clip on that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And it looks like it's a little bit over. I can maneuver this a little and my fab my piece is roughly the same okay so you keep going around you keep going around until you've matched them all up okay i don't know if you can see the shadow there yeah the I edge is there the edge is there so it's in the right place okay and I've got that clipped. The next thing that, oh, by the way, I didn't mention, I don't think, and see, we've got a little buckle there, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let that loose because it means that my foundation is a little bit smaller than my, my piece that's going on. Now it's okay. Before you do anything, when you trim these, 
these um, applique patterns out, cut away the red line because it's going to make the piece too big if you leave it on. So on every one of these applique foundations, this one, all of these, the one that is here, I cut the red line off. Just I took just took just the red line away. Okay. So that one's ready. Now then the next step, then the next thing you'll do is stitch your applique down. Either with the zigzag or by hand, however you want to do it. And then that piece is going to be ready to go in the quilt. And you'll also notice that I have trimmed the outer edges. Ordinarily, we tell you to leave that until, until you get ready to put it together. But in this case, since I needed to match this applique up, I needed to be able to have those lines already trimmed and clean. Okay. Right. Now, this one is for unit one. And for unit one and unit five, the process is the same. Stitch on the red lines, prepare your applique pattern, and it's got to go on next. So. Because you've got an extra piece that goes on that foundation outside where the applique goes. Right. So now we're going to fold this back so you can see the corner. And you match up that okay. corner right there. And I'm going to stick a clip on it for right now and then fold that back and reposition the clip. That piece is ready to be sewn on. And I will do the same thing with this piece. Fold this back so that I can see the lines. And another clip and it's ready to go on. Then you will sew. This one skewed a little bit. We're going to straighten him up. You will applique here and here. And then when the appliques are on, you will trim. You'll add the next piece You'll on. You'll add the next piece by. And this is just following the gen general, directions the general directions of the stable piecing, just to trim back to a quarter of an inch and add the piece on. And that's the square piece that you've got right above it, right? Yeah. Those then are the these get added on to each side here and here. Okay. And the same applies to unit five. Okay, because your applique, the edge of the applique gets enclosed in the seam line. The only way to do that is to put it on before you put that extra square on, and then when you sew the square, it be it is enclosed in the seam line. Right. Then the next thing to do is apply the appliques to unit two and unit four. And we've already sewed this one down, supposedly. Okay. Then these are ready to go. After the appliques have all been sewn on and these extra pieces are added to units one and five, then you clean up the outside edges, which is cut away everything that sticks out beyond this outer dashed line and put the block together in numerical order. One to one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. Okay. And your block will be done. So you've got one here and one, it's underneath of this one clip. One is underneath of this clip. clip. But you're going to put the one here. And then you're going to do the two here, and this will be adding in that one. Mm -hmm. And then you end up at, with three up here. And four and down here. And then four down here. So you're adding your pieces in numerical order. And then when you get done. That's what it should look that's like. That's what it should look like. And because you, she said to cut off the red line on the applique, you see how these do not overlap each other? None of those overlap. They kind of meet. That one does a little that bit. That one didn't. Well, Jane's quilt wasn't perfect, so mine isn't either. There you go. But anyway, the idea is that they don't overlap, and if they do, very, very little. So that's the idea behind this one. Anyway, if you got any other questions or need anything else, please give us a holler. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening.